Well, grade 12s, you know what chemical equilibrium is. So we'll start straight away with some chemical magic. We made these two solutions by dissolving cobalt chloride in alcohol. We also added a few drops of water to both of them. Notice that the color of both solutions is purple-blue. Now watch what happens when we add more water to one of the solutions. It changes from blue to pink. Now if we add a few drops of hydrochloric acid to the pink solution, it turns back to its original blue color. Wow, that's quite amazing. Even more amazing is that you can repeat these changes many times. And you can predict what will make the solutions change color too. Can you remember what happens when a chemical reaction in a closed system is in a state of chemical equilibrium? Here's a hint. Remember the graph shows how the rate of the forward reaction and the reverse reaction change over time for a closed system until the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. When the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction, the reaction is in chemical equilibrium. Remember that at chemical equilibrium, we can't see any changes on a macroscopic view. But at a microscopic view, there are continual changes. Also remember that chemists can tell that a system is in chemical equilibrium by measuring the concentrations of the reactants and products. At the start of a reaction, the concentrations of the reactants decrease, and the concentrations of the products increase. When the reaction reaches equilibrium, the concentrations of the reactants and products remain constant. So what happens if we change the concentrations of either the reactants or products after chemical equilibrium is reached. Let's have a look at what happens to mountain climbers at high altitude. While climbing, mountain climbers absorb oxygen into their lungs. As with all humans, a chemical reaction takes place between oxygen and hemoglobin. Hemoglobin in red blood cells is responsible for transporting oxygen in the blood to all parts of your body. The equation for the reaction of hemoglobin with oxygen is hemoglobin Hb reacts with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin. In normal conditions, the concentration of reactants and products stays constant. But when mountain climbers reach high altitudes, the concentration of oxygen in the air decreases drastically. As a result, the oxygen in their lungs decreases, and so does the oxygen in the system. The reaction starts to change. The system wants to fix the change that is happening because the reaction is no longer in equilibrium. The reverse reaction increases its rate to produce more oxygen. This reduces the amount of oxyhemoglobin. This means a new equilibrium is established. But when the concentration of oxyhemoglobin reduces, the climbers do not get enough oxygen in all parts of their bodies. They may start to feel lightheaded. They then need to put on their oxygen masks so that they can increase the amount of oxygen to the lungs. The oxygen masks increase the concentration of oxygen in the lungs, so the body system tries to fix this change. Now the system favors the forward reaction to decrease the amount of oxygen. Therefore, more oxyhemoglobin is produced, and the climbers get enough oxygen to the rest of their bodies. 
This happens constantly in our bodies and in many other systems. As the concentration of oxygen decreases, the reverse reaction is favored, which increases the concentration of oxygen again. And when the concentration of the oxygen increases, the forward reaction is favored, which decreases the concentration again. This shifting in equilibrium to favor a certain reaction can be explained by using Le Chatelier's principle. So what is Le Chatelier's principle? Here is one statement of the principle. It's so important and you need to memorize it. A change in any of the factors that determine equilibrium conditions of a system causes the system to change in such a manner as to reduce or counteract the effect of the change. So, for example, let's say this reaction system is in equilibrium. If we then increase the concentration of reactant A, the system changes. That means all the concentrations of the reactants and products change so that the concentration of the reactant A is reduced. Let's hear more from Amira. Remember that in a forward reaction, the reactants react to make products. And in a reverse reaction, the reactants are made and products react. Let's look at the mountain climbers again in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. At high altitudes, Climbers experience a decrease in the concentration of oxygen. Oxygen is one of the reactants in this reaction. The decrease in the concentration of oxygen disturbs the state of chemical equilibrium. According to Le Chatelier, this disturbance or stress forces the system to try to undo the effect of this disturbance. So the system will try to make more oxygen. The system will favor the reaction that will increase the concentration of oxygen. Will the forward reaction make more oxygen or will the reverse reaction make more oxygen? The reverse reaction will make more oxygen. In this situation, we say that the reverse reaction is favored. This means that the system has opposed the change done to it and a new equilibrium is formed. An interesting thing happens in people who live in high altitude places. They adapt to the low concentration of oxygen. Their bodies produce more hemoglobin. Can you predict what effect an increase in the concentration of hemoglobin has on the system. The change or stress in the system is an increase in hemoglobin concentration. Hemoglobin is a reactant. Will the forward reaction use up the hemoglobin or will the reverse reaction use up the hemoglobin? The forward reaction will use up the hemoglobin. Therefore, we say the forward reaction is favored. A new equilibrium is reached. More oxyhemoglobin is produced. Now let's return to the chemical magic I showed you at the beginning of the lesson. Look at the chemical equation for this reaction. On the left-hand side of the equation, we see the cobalt chloride complex. This gives the solution its blue color. On the right-hand side of the equation, we have hydrated cobalt ions. These ions give the solution its pink color. Kanye and Rahim are investigating the reactions and using Le Chatelier's principle to explain what happens. According to Le Chatelier, if we change the concentration of the reactant to the products, it will cause stress on the equilibrium, and the system will try to undo that stress. So I'm thinking if I add hydrochloric acid to the hydrated cobalt ions, then the reverse reaction is favored, and therefore there'll be more blue molecules than pink ones. But wait a minute, why would we add hydrochloric acid because there isn't any in the reaction? Yes, but look at the equation. There are chloride ions, and hydrochloric acid has chloride ions. 
So if we add hydrochloric acid, then we are increasing the concentration of chloride ions. Cool. Let me put the hydrochloric acid in. The color has changed to blue. This is because we increase the concentration of chloride ions. The reverse reaction was favored, so more of the blue complex was made. It's important to note that even though the solution looks blue, the pink ions are still present. There are just more blue ones than pink ones. We say the position of the equilibrium has changed. How can we make the solution turn pink? Well, water is a reactant. So if we add more water, this should favor the forward reaction to use up the extra water and make more of the pink hydrated cobalt ions. I think we've got it. We now know how the change in concentration affects the chemical equilibrium. Let's see how this change is shown on graphs of concentration versus time. Do you remember that ammonia is produced in the Haber process? In the Haber process, nitrogen reacts with hydrogen to produce ammonia. Let's see if the reaction will shift when we add more nitrogen. According to Le Chatelier, the position of the equilibrium will shift in such a way as to undo the change made to the reaction. The change is the increase of nitrogen. Will the forward reaction use up the excess nitrogen, or will the reverse reaction use up the excess nitrogen? Yes, the forward reaction is favored. The reaction rate of the forward reaction increases, and while the concentrations of nitrogen and hydrogen decrease, the concentration of ammonia increases until it reaches equilibrium again. Let's see what will happen to the concentration over time in the equilibrium graph. Here, the products and reactants have already reached equilibrium. We can see the immediate spike of nitrogen. This is when we added more nitrogen. Remember, the forward reaction is favored. The nitrogen and hydrogen react more, causing a decrease in their concentrations. Ammonia production increases. A new equilibrium is established without changing the equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant remains the same, because if the concentration of a reactant is suddenly increased, the product's concentration will also increase. Here we have the concentrations of hydrogen, nitrogen, and ammonia. The Kc value is 3,4. When we add more hydrogen, the forward reaction is favored. The concentration of ammonia increases as the concentrations of the hydrogen and nitrogen decrease. The Kc still works out to be 3,4. What we are learning today about Le Chatelier's principle is very important to all industries that produce chemicals. For example, ammonia production is only successful because people have learned how to shift the position of the chemical equilibrium to get a large ammonia yield. Look at what happens if we remove ammonia from the equilibrium. When there is a sudden dip in ammonia, the equilibrium will shift in such a way as to undo this change. The forward reaction will produce more ammonia to undo this decrease. This means 
the nitrogen and hydrogen react and drop in concentration, producing more ammonia. For an industry to make more ammonia, as required, they would need to remove the ammonia to force the equilibrium. Of course, at the same time, hydrogen and nitrogen must be added to the system. This means that the system is no longer a closed system. Another example is the contact process, which is a series of reactions that produce sulfuric acid. Here is the reaction that takes place during the contact process. Sulfur dioxide reacts with oxygen to produce sulfur trioxide. Le Chatelet's principle is really important, so I think it's a good idea to do some of the questions in the rates and chemical equilibrium task video. Also see our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn for more details on this series. Again, take care for now.